Folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. So, folks, I hope you're enjoying all of the videos that were popping out there for you. Make sure you hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button. And if you want notified when we have a new video pop up, by all means, hit the bell for notifications. We're thrilled to have you on board. We're happy to be showing you a lot of these cool things in X Lights. And I know for a lot of people, even some of the seasoned veterans, there's a lot of little things in here that we forget about or we don't know about. And that is the point of the tips and tricks series that you see Pixel Pro Displays putting together for you. So with that being said, today's tips and tricks is on groups. And this is a huge thanks to um, a great question that I read in the official x -Lite support group on Facebook the other day. Is there too many groups? Is there such a thing as too many groups or not enough groups? Can you have too many groups? And the answer is no. You can have as many groups as you like to. Now, I wanted to share the layout that you see in front of you because there are a couple different ways that I have set up groups for the way that I sequence. One of the best ways that I enjoy sequencing is using a group to keep things organized so that whenever I open up the group I can get quickly to a couple of the props that I really want to sequence. Another way to think about it though is not just is is just for organization but also for rendering style purposes. There are different render styles and I'll, I'll try to do a couple little ones so that you get a little bit of the uh, the gist of the of the of the changes in different render styles whenever it comes to groups but uh, and that's a whole video in itself going through all of those but what I'd like to show you is this is what I consider all display all display to me is everything minus any mega trees any matrices and a star for a tree or a tree topper if it's attached to the house, if it's touching the ground, uh, then it's in the all display group unless it's a mega tree or a star. This is just my thought process. It makes it a little easier when you do whole house effects. Uh, a lot of times when you do do a whole house, whenever you put an effect like a pinwheel on the whole display, you, you probably have something going on in this tree. Or perhaps you purchased a uh, special tree sequence from uh, different vendors and so forth. And one of the things that you don't want to do is have this tree in one of your groups. So. I have a, a specific group that's set aside called All Display that doesn't include the mega trees. Now, if I wanted to, I could create another group called All Display with mega trees. I could create another group that says All Displays with matrices. It all depends on what your needs are. Whenever I sequence, I like to sequence a matrix and a mega tree separately. I like there to be some value in the sequencing, and therefore I try to keep the sequencing separated for those specific parts. So with that out of the way, I want to move on and I want to show you a couple of the groups. So what I have here is an all house, which is everything on the house. Now, if you look at how the groups are made, these are groups, all roof. See how all roof is a group, all house decorations. Well, all house decorations, that's a group as well. Windows and doors, if I scroll down here, you can see that uh, windows and doors is a group and you can tell by the little file that that denotes that it's a group and so forth. All of these in our all house model that you see here is all groups. But when we go to the all decorations, now you can see we're using physical individual models. Okay, so once again, it's just a way to activate different groups of models to put effects onto that let's say I just want the decorations doing something I want everything on my house doing something but I don't want my uh, verticals doing it I don't want my uh, roof lines I don't want my icicles doing it I don't want my uh, windows and stuff so keep that in mind that you can create this segregation of different groups to help you create individual looks that will uh, for example let's say you wanted a solid effect on this color uh, or, or on this model and let's say you want the red on the uh, the spinners and snowflakes and then on the gutters you wanted green and then on the verticals you wanted blue so you could do that because you have a decoration group that has all your decorations in it or you could create a, a and you could create another group that is just your icicles 
uh, like this. That would be all your icicles could be a different color. And you can, you can separate those out so that you can create some really, really specific effects that are tuned in for your display the way that you like. So now with this being said, I'm going to go into the Sequencer tab, and I'm going to go to our All Groups. I, I create views, and, and uh, I have another video on this if you're interested. Uh, you can search my Leechberg Lights for the, for the uh, Create Groups and Views video. Um, but for here, what we'll do is we're just going to lay down an effect on the All House, and we'll do a... Um, we'll do a... Uh, Oh, that, did I do that right? Yeah, all that should say all house. All house. That should be everything on the house. Oh, I think I have a setting here changed. Let me do something here. Let me change the effect, change the effect, and we will do that again. There we go. Now we're all set. We've got, we've got right now, we have everything going on the entire house with the chase. I'm going to switch this over to this. <clears throat> So you can see the single strand chase effect going from left to right on the house. I'm just going to select the red here to make it a little easier. Actually, the white so it shows up really good. And you can see that it is applying the single strand effect, the single chase, straight across the whole house. But if you change a render style from default to, let's go down here, to per model default, look what happens. It doesn't seem that much has happened, but have a look, have a look at this front door. See how the effect is traveling on the front door from left to right. See how on the, um, uh, see how on each of these effects, it's traveling per the model default, and it doesn't. It, it gives us certainly a different appearance than if you do it on default. Now, if we go ahead and we do this per model, per preview, it's something different as well. So you see how it's traveling across the per the preview? It's doing the same thing on uh, all of these specific models because they're in a specific group. Now, if we take this effect, let me, let me uh, copy this. And we take this effect and we put this on, for instance, all our windows or... Uh, windows and doors, which is down here. Paste. See how the effect is totally different? It's traveling from left to right on each window. It's not going across, appearing to go across the whole plane of the model or the whole plane of the group. So effects render differently depending on how those effects are ordered inside of the group. So if you have a group within a group, the effects will render certainly a lot differently. Um, here, here's a here's another here's another one. Let's do uh, let's do as default. Um, one of the ways that this is very prevalent is if you use the uh, shockwave effect. If we bring the shockwave effect down here, and you put it on the all house, now you've got this effect that is centered on the center of the house. I'll make this a little bigger so you can actually see it. Bam. There you go. Now, nice wide coverage of, and you can see it on the whole house preview there. But if we take this at the default and we change this to per model per preview, now it's going to each model, which is, in this case, a model is the group that's underneath of it, these groups that are inside it. That's each a model then you get something totally different when you copy it and you paste it into the windows and doors or let's you know what let's go to the let's go to the um icicles because the icicles this really kind of pops on pop right there bam so that's per model per preview but look at it here when it's per model per preview it's not doing it individually on those icicles because that group isn't existing in the same way in here that it could be. See, all roof, that's another one. Let's put it on all the all roof, and that way you can kind of see a little more one for one. So here's the all roof. This is the roof outlines and so forth. But it's also the all roof that's inside the house, all house. So look at the difference between the effects rendered per model per preview 
on a group that's outside of the main groups. Here's your, these are groups within that group. But if you go down to that actual group level, you get a whole different look or appearance because now the effects are being rendered on the actual interiors of the all roof. So if we go back to the all roof, we look at the all roof, and we can see that the all roof is built with individual single models. It's not built with other groups. So folks, I know this is a rather long video, but I thought that this was important to bring up because if you don't realize a lot of the ways that effects are rendered when you're placing them on to a model or a group, then you don't understand why they're not working a certain way. So sometimes, yes, you need more groups, but just because you have more groups doesn't mean it makes it easier to sequence. It just gives you more options. In fact, the more options you have, I hate to say it, it makes it a little harder to make a final decision on what you like better sometimes. But at the same time, that's what's so great about this software is there's so many different ways to create so many awesome things. So, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Like this video if you liked it. Share it with everybody if you loved it. Remember to hit the big red subscribe button at the bottom of the page and also the bell for notifications for future videos. And if you haven't signed up for the free PPD sequence a membership, you can sign up and get a lot more of our videos that are on our website, as well as signing up for the PPD Sequence Club, which offers you huge vendor discounts on things that you're already going to buy. We have a list of vendors that are um, that are that work with us to bring you some of the very greatest deals in Pixels and in, in Coro and also in the controller build, building field if you are building controllers and so forth. So folks, thank you for joining us in today's X Lights videos. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Thanks. We'll see you again soon in the next video. Down through the chimney with those and me. Sam, and every time it rains, it rains. And hold